the Go Berserk with Email podcast with Navy nuclear engineer turned email software developer, Troy Broussard. So calm. I'm pissed off, but I'm telling this because I am teaching you how to think differently and how to test differently. So patient. And Ben, that's put a half a million dollars into this company too, is being told that nobody can find the goddamn bug. So charitable. I'm going to start paying bounties every time somebody finds a bug. We're going to deduct $10 that week. So trusting. Do not assume that anything works. Assume that nothing works. And so sweet, it makes sugar taste just like salt. I want to play into the sexiness of marketing automation, but I also want to slap the complexity of it. The Go Berserk with Email podcast begins now. Are you guys capitalists? I mean, what do you love money? (laughs) We like making money. Yeah. I mean, you know. Ben's got a youngin at home, you know. Willis likes some food. He likes to eat. Likes money on the table. No, actually, it's it's funny to talk about the setup fee of Berserker Mail is a loss leader for us. We actually lose money on the setup fee. It's not something that is a profit booster at all. It's really a performance booster. And so, you know, this is kind of the the Berserker Mail Viagra right here, baby. This is how we keep everything real and charging forward, Jonathan, ever forward. All right. So the reason we charge a setup fee is because we scrub your list What's that mean? when we import. What's that mean? All right. List scrubbing is, you know, for those of you that don't occasionally take baths and things like that, it's where you scrub and clean yourself. Yes, a scrubbing process. I just want to clarify. I never know who I'm dealing with here on the other end, Jonathan. So scrubbing your list is about removing some of the the bad actors on your list that you don't even realize are there. And and this is the funny part. Like everybody always comes to us. Oh, no, my list is clean. I don't need to scrub it. Yes, you do. For one, because it's not clean. You just think it is. And for two, it's because it's our platform and you ain't getting on here unless we scrub it. And Again, remember, this is the platform that drives, you know, four different companies that I'm running at this point. It's a platform that drives everything that Ben does and and his email players and his companies. This is, you know, the whole enchilada for us. We're not going to allow garbage on to our network. And hopefully that should resonate with you as a protection of you as well, because that's what it really is. Because this is the same platform that we run our businesses on, we scrutinize who is allowed onto the platform. And we scrutinize when you bring a list of contacts onto the platform, we go through it with a fine tooth comb and remove all the little grubby uglies that shouldn't be there. We don't want them on the list. And so list scrubbing is a mandatory part of a new account with us, but people should not look at it as a fee or a penalty. They should honestly be happy about it because first of all, we're charging less than they would probably pay to a list scrubbing service. And second of all, we're doing things on their behalf to make their platform and their emails higher performing, higher quality, increase their deliverability, all of those things. So when we go through a scrub, there's a couple of things we do. And I can't go into all of the details here. There's a lot of intellectual property involved in this, but there are dozens and dozens thing, as, of particular tasks that we do in the scrubbing process that I, we don't talk about. But a couple of the things that we do is that we will scrub through the list and identify likely problems for your list. Some of them we will just not allow to come onto the list. Others will red flag for you to be able to go investigate further as a warning. But for example, things like spam bots, uh, spam bots are identified through the service that that we provide. And we don't just say there's some on your list. We tell you which emails they are and we don't allow them to be imported. Right. We also do the same thing with honey traps. Honey traps are, uh, this is really common. Most people, I would say probably 70 or 80% of their list is free emails, right? So their Gmail addresses and Yahoo addresses and all of that. Well, 
if you went and, you know, set up some email address for the 90s, Jonathan, when you had the MLM is fun for you at yahoo.com email address, right? I know that was you, Jonathan. I, I know it was you. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, in 1991, you realize MLM is not so much fun for you. And you decide, I'm not using that damn email address anymore. And you just stop using it, right? It's a free account. It's not like you need to close it out or cancel. So you just stop using it. You abandon it. Well, what happens is the email service providers see that you've abandoned it and they turn it into a honey trap. They continue to allow it to be used to see if people are still emailing this dead contact that is clearly not even a person anymore, not interacting, not engaging, not doing anything. And so they turn dead accounts into honey traps. And that's another problem is, is having these on your list because what it does is it has your ESP spying on you and penalizing you for uh, bad email practices, sending out emails to dead respondents, right? And so this is a, one of their dirty little secrets of how they you know monitor and affect your deliverability. So when we go through a list scrub, we scrub against all of that. We check for those things. And it's never perfect. Nothing is. But it's as good as we can uh, find in the industry. And that's why we use it. And that allows us to prune some of that off of the list. We find some lists come over and have hundreds of spam traps on their list or bots. Bot opt-ins are, are just terrible. So when we clean all this stuff off and we scrub it off the list and we refuse to import those contacts, we're doing you and and all of our customers a favor because we're preserving the integrity and quality of the network. Now, another thing that we do is that we have internally another process that we go through. So it's not like we're just farming out the scrubbing. We have multiple things that we do and multiple processes. I'm only going to talk about the two of them. But the second one that we do is we have a, a massive database of over 400,000 email domains that are just bogus domains used for disposable email addresses. So... You know, things like Mailinator is one of them, which everybody is familiar with, where you go and you get this temporary email address and you use it just to download something, but then you never have to look at it again. So it's a way of like not getting on somebody's email address, but getting the gift they're giving or something like that, right? Disposable email addresses are all the rage. Well, we filter out, and again, we can't filter out all of them, but we filter out over 400,000 different domains that are known to be these throwaway domains or disposable emails. You don't want to be emailing those on your list. It's not any value to you whatsoever. And we block them from opting in, but we also block them on import from even being on your list in the first place. And those that are needy will get kind of pissed off sometimes over the scrubbing because they'll be like, I lost 118 contacts. No, dude, you lost 118 people that never open your email guaranteed. Why would you want to email them? Why would you, you know, all you're really doing is hurting your open, open rates and deliverability and click rates and everything else by mailing dead people on your list. So these are some of the benefits and some of the reasons for list scrubbing. And, you know, today, a, as you know, most email service providers block email opens. They, A lot of them now are starting to block clicks as well. And so this commonly referred approach of uh, engagement tracking and, oh, if they haven't opened or clicked an email, opt them out, that nonsense just doesn't work because they're not reporting opens and clicks half the time anyway or more. And so you have to then go beyond that. You have to go beyond just open and click tracking and you need to go through the detailed process of doing a periodic list scrub. And so when, what we find is about 75% of the people that join Berserker Mail have never scrubbed their list and don't even know what it is. And that's okay. But we also find that others will periodically have us rescrub the list for them at a small fee and we'll go through and, and reprocess it for them periodically every six months or a year or something like that to keep the hygiene up, to keep the hygiene up. You know, just like you got to brush your teeth at least once or twice a week, Jonathan. I mean, come on, you got to clean that list once or twice a year anyway. I, I feel a, a meme coming on. Anybody out there listening who, who's an artist, 
I, I feel like we need a meme for <laughs> I mail dead people. I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mailed. Mean, I thought you were going to go with the uh, with a meme of like the 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 bright smile, like a bright smile meme of has your list has your list been scrubbed and the email list turning white, nice. you know, and scrubbed nice. white. There, there's a the, lot we can do here, yeah. but I, I hadn't. Is there a threshold? Is there a threshold like for somebody new coming in? If they have a, a smaller list, is it worth it to go through that or is it better for them to just start fresh? Like, is there some sort of threshold where, where you would recommend that? If you've got any list at all, it's still worth preserving what you've got. I mean, even if you only have 100 people on there, you're not likely to have, you know, lose much in the list scrub anyway. So why wouldn't you go through it? And you know, if you've got a really old list that you've been mailing for many, many years, you're going to be really surprised how much junk you have on that list. And so, yeah, it's it's worth it for everybody. And that's why we make it a mandatory step in the process, because, quite frankly, we're not collecting other people's junk. If you want to take your junk leads to some other email platform, feel free. You're not bringing that crap here. One more. I have one more. And this is a tie back to to an earlier episode in one or two episodes ago where you talked about uh, segmenting, right, and, and, and testing, and it was by domain and by age. How are you able, are you able to, to keep the age? Is, is that information in there? It can be. It just depends on if you're, if you have, when you do a, a, an import into our, into our system, if you know the age of when that account signed up in your prior list, just let us know at the help desk when we bring that data in and we can preserve that data. If it's, if it's data that you can export from your current email platform, then we can bring it in cool, in cool. our platform. All right. Yes. Uh, anything else we, we need to talk about? When it comes to list hygiene, scrubbing your list and keeping it white and shiny? Well, you know, people ask how often should you do it? And I, I think that, you know, once you go through a big scrub, it's probably, you could probably wait, you know, six months before doing it again. I think maybe twice a year is probably a pretty good, a, a pretty good uh schedule depending on your list volume right it really depends on how many opt-ins you're getting if you're getting a lot of opt-ins uh you may do it every other month if you're getting you know 10,000 opt-ins a week or something like that then yeah you're probably going to want to do it you know every other month or so but for as a general guideline i would say for most people probably once or twice a year uh is pretty good about like nice. going to the dentist. every six months or so got it man that that was uh kind of fun and I, I i'm putting the challenge out there anybody listening uh memes for this show yes get them to us <laughs> that is a wrap for another go berserk with email show thank you guys for tuning in thank you troy for hanging with us we'll be back in your earbuds next time to get a free Berserker Mail test drive with no credit card required, go to startmytestdrive.com. From there, you can play around inside the platform without pressure, load up emails and campaigns to see how simple the interface is, and get comfy with everything before deciding to join. That's startmytestdrive.com. This is the podcastfactory.com.